Welcome to the Introduction to Computer Science, Computer Hardware. This is Lecture C. The component, Introduction to Computer Science, provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation, and structure, structure of programming languages, networking, and data communication. It also includes the basic terminology of computing. The learning objectives for this unit, Computer Hardware, are to describe the major components of a computer system, Provide examples of input and output devices used in healthcare. Discuss primary and secondary storage devices. Introduce binary notation and describe data representation, storage, and manipulation in binary format. Introduce data types and explain how different data types are stored and addressed. Describe the functionality of the central processing unit, or CPU. And provide examples of CPUs designed for healthcare applications. In this lecture, we'll be discussing various data types and how each is stored and addressed, and describing the functionality of the CPU in detail. Data types are predefined data characteristics. They include the range of values data can assume, the programming language used for its processing, and the operations that can be performed on it. Data types determine how data is stored in memory. Data is processed by software based on its type. Some common data types include integers, for example, the whole number 12. Floating point numbers, for example, 3.14159265. And characters, for example, the letter A. Let's look at how those three data types are stored in a computer's memory. Integers are stored as binary numbers, and they use something referred to as two's complement, which allows for the storage of negative and positive integers. Floating point numbers are stored as floating point notation, which is similar to scientific notation, with the exponent and mantissa stored in binary format. Characters are stored in the American Standard Code for Information Exchange, or ASCII format, or Unicode format. Each character, again, is represented by a binary value. ASCII encodes every character by an 8-bit binary integer. The 8-bit word 01000001 is mapped to the English language alphabet character capital A. Notice that this is a capital A, not the lowercase a that is mapped to the 8-bit binary word 01100001. Each keyboard character is assigned its own distinct 8-bit word by ASCII. An operating system can locate data that is stored in primary or secondary storage. When data is stored in primary or secondary storage, each piece of data is provided a physical memory address by the CPU. Whenever data is subsequently used by a program, for example to open or save a file, or device, for example a print request from the user, then this physical address is used as its reference. File addresses start with the first character of the file and end with the file's last character. Characters in the file are strung together like railroad cars that make up a train, where each car knows its head and its tail. The physical address is represented in hexadecimal which allows the address to be represented in fewer digits than in binary. However, a full discussion of hexadecimal representation is beyond the scope of this lecture. Consider this example of data addressing. The memory address 000 has the contents in binary of 1001. In memory address 101, we have memory content in binary of 0100. Moving on to the second topic in this lecture, we will now discuss the Central Processing Unit, or CPU. The CPU is the most important computer component. It interprets and executes instructions given by programs. The CPU is the brain of the computer and is responsible for the main operations of the entire computer system. While all of the devices connected to a computer can typically send and receive information, they still need the CPU to process the information. The CPU has its own small, very fast memory called the cache, which is usually implemented with synchronous dynamic RAM, or SDRAM. A multi-core processor is a CPU with two or more processing units, known as cores, that act independently. Also, multiple processors can be installed on modern motherboards. The main function of the CPU is to execute instructions. These instructions are very simple, such as basic arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Other instructions include load and store instructions, which retrieve values from memory or store values in memory. The CPU also executes branch instructions, used to move from one part of a program to another part of a program. The CPU is made up of two parts, the arithmetical logical unit, or ALU, and the control unit. 
The ALU performs arithmetic and logical operations. Some CPUs contain more than one ALU, so that more than one math operation can be performed at a time. The control unit manages all the things the processor does. It fetches the next instruction and then decodes it so that the CPU can operate on that instruction. Registers store the operands used by the ALU. Registers are fast, temporary storage connected to the ALU and to CPU memory. Computer programmers, specifically those who study assembly language programming, learn how to store values in these registers, how to retrieve them, and how to operate on them using values in other registers. Another CPU component is its memory, called cache. Finally, the CPU contains buses. Buses are used to carry data between CPU components. The CPU operates in cycles. The operating cycle is known as the CPU instruction cycle, or fetch, decode, execute cycle. It consists of four steps. Step 1. The CPU, through the use of its control unit, retrieves an instruction or data from memory. This step is known as fetch. The CPU keeps track of the location of the current instruction in memory through the use of something called a program counter. The CPU needs to know which instruction it is executing and the memory address of the next instruction. Step 2. The CPU, through the use of its control unit, determines the actions needed to execute the instruction. This is called decoding. As the CPU finishes decoding the instruction, any values contained within the instruction are placed into registers. Step 3. The CPU executes the instruction. Step 4. The ALU stores any computed result in a register. The image on this slide provides a logical view of how the CPU operates. The instruction fetcher is at the top. The instruction is then decoded and placed in registers. The ALU performs some type of an operation and writes the result to the registers. Now that all elements, the motherboard, input and output devices, RAM, hard disks, the CPU, motherboard buses, and CPU buses have been discussed, let's look at them logically in a diagram. The diagram on this slide depicts the CPU, which has access to the motherboard's data and address bus, which gives the CPU access to the memory and to input and output devices. The CPU optimizes its performance through the creation of processes and threads. A process is a running program, such as Microsoft Word. A thread is a specific task running within a process. For example, Word may save changes to a file and then subsequently print the file. Each of these operations represents a thread within Word's process. Threads can exist in a number of states at any given time. For example, a thread may be running, waiting, stopped, or blocked. Why would a thread be in a blocked state? A thread might be blocked, for example, if it presents a request to print something while the printer is currently in use. In the interim, while the given thread is blocked, the CPU moves on to another process or thread and waits for the blocked thread to resume. In this case, the blocked thread enters the resume state so that it can print. This process makes it appear that the CPU is performing more than one operation at a time, when in fact, it never does so. For a number of years, it seemed that the functionality of CPUs grew at an exponential rate, and so many of us were hesitant to purchase a computer for fear that it would be obsolete within a few months. Today's motherboards support installation of multiple CPUs on a single motherboard. Each of those CPUs may contain multiple cores. In this case, the computer is capable of performing more than one thing at a time. This is an evolving technology, as CPU vendors such as Intel and AMD work to produce more efficient CPUs without significantly changing motherboard architecture. Medical imaging done in CT and MRI scans requires specialized CPU architectures. For example, the GE Healthcare CT750 HD Computed Tomography Scanner scans and stores hundreds of terabytes of data at a time. This type of equipment, which features Intel Xeon-based CPU, must discern the soft tissue and organs at almost a molecular level in real time. For that type of functionality, the CPU has to be optimized for speed and performance. Desktop and server CPUs cannot provide this type of performance. This concludes Lecture C of Computer Hardware. In summary, this lecture discussed different types of data, their representation, storage, and addressing within a computer. How data type determines the way in which data is stored in memory and processed by software. Data addressing, which is used to store and retrieve data. The central processing unit, or CPU, and its functionality. CPUs designed specifically for the healthcare applications. 
This also concludes the unit Computer Hardware. In summary, this unit covered major components of a computer system, CPUs and input and output devices designed specifically for healthcare applications, how data is represented, stored, and manipulated in binary format, data types, data representation and addressing, and CPU functionality and its interaction with other components of a computer.